started during the regular season, the first time the Tigers ran down the hill in 1981. But the actual trip got started late in December, as members of the team left Clemson, heading for a pre-bowl training camp in New Smyrna Beach, Florida. The Tigers would spend a very productive week in New Smyrna, getting acclimated to Florida and back in the swing of things as far as football is concerned. It's that week, the week that they spent in Florida, that Clemson believes was the reason they were successful in the Orange Bowl, a solid week of working to get ready for Nebraska. And then after that, it was on to Miami. More football practices in Tropical Park where the final touches were put on the game plan. But there were times now available to the Clemson players to cash in and enjoy a little bit of the notoriety and celebrity status of the number one football team in the country and some of the fringe benefits of being a bowl team. Got to the local Playboy Club for some dinner and sightseeing. And offensive lineman Brian Clark says that it's nice to have a little bit of a change from the routine of practice and work every day. You haven't gotten to the food yet. Are you still just taking in the view? Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're uh, drinking a couple of beers and uh, looking around, enjoying the sights. Let me get kind of serious with you for a second. How important right. is it for a night like this in, in preparation? <laughs> now, you obviously haven't had many of these in the last two weeks. Well, the game's coming up pretty soon, and um, you know we're going to have to get our minds on that. Uh, real quick here, um, but it, it's good to get out of once in a while and relax a little bit and enjoy ourselves. That's what we're down here to have a good time. And while the players were out having a good time, the people on the coaching staff and administrative personnel had a chance to get out themselves. You don't oftentimes see the coaches and folks who run the Clemson Athletic Program this dressed up or an opportunity to meet their wives. But on their way to the coronation ball of the Orange Bowl Queen, we thought you'd like to see the Clemson Royalty as they have a night out on the town in Miami. The game of high lie is native to South Florida. And Perry Tuttle, a Cub reporter in this case, tried to explain a little bit about how the game was played. Live from Miami, I'm Perry Tuttle, wide receiver from Clemson, here at the Ally in Miami. I'm, uh, this is for Eyewitness Sports, <laughs> and I want to ask a couple of players, uh, what do they think about this sport, or what do they know about this sport, if anything? Uh, here we got uh, Ye uh, Jeff Davis, linebacker for Clemson Tigers, All-American. Can I have Jeff in for a second? Jeff, what do you really know about this game? Uh, I know a whole lot. Uh, I've been playing it for several years now. Uh, you know what kind of game I'm talking about, Ally. Not football, Ally. Ally. <laughs> oh, I don't know anything about I lie. Uh, I've never heard of it, but it seems like it's going to be very exciting, and I'm looking forward to seeing it. Well, uh, I heard about this man about five years ago out of Greensboro, North Carolina. Oh, a successful story. Overcome a lot of adversity as, as far as his life goes. Uh, heart trouble, <laughs> knee trouble, head trouble. <laughs> it's getting bigger every day. Uh, can we have another guy? Andy Hedden, defensive end. Andy, what do you really know about this game? I just know it got a ball, and they're just playing with the ball, man. That's about it. That's about it. That's about it. Uh, can we have someone else on this? <laughs> and it is no help to us at this point. Like I said, we are live from Miami with the L.A. We got here Mark Rich and another defensive end. Uh, Mark, what do you really know about this game, Ally? Ally, I understand it's a very fast game, and that they're expecting a big crowd because Perry Tuttle's going to be here tonight. Perry Tuttle? Perry Tuttle, big uh, Perry Tuttle. I seem like I heard that name before. Yes, he's a very famous person in the Miami area. Well, uh, when you see him, tell him to come by. I'd like to have a word with him. <laughs> having a good time the Clemson Tigers we're here to play Nebraska in the Orange Bowl we're looking forward we had a real good time it's it's been a long day <laughs> we appreciate the audience but this is our witness sports saying cause you the people are the stars of the show good night <laughs> in addition to a good time for the players and the present coaches it was also a big day in Miami for Frank Howard the coach of two Orange Bowl teams when he was named to the Hall of Fame by the Orange Bowl Committee. Uh, we came down here and beat the devil out of Miami in one of these Orange Bowl games. Beat the devil out of them, humiliated them, 15 to 14. <laughs> <laughs> if most of you know, I had to retire Clemson due to health reasons. The alumni got sick of me. 
Well, there wasn't a lot of time to lay around the pool and soak up some of the South Florida sunshine. The players and staff had a chance to do some of that, and they made the best of their opportunities. However, probably the cheerleaders of the Clemson Tigers got more of a chance to do that, practicing some of their cheers and, in general, looking like a bunch of kids hanging around a swimming pool on occasion. <laughs> Besides players and coaches and staff members spending a busy week working to get ready for the Orange Bowl game, Dr. Bruce Cook brought his Clemson Tiger marching band to Miami to get ready for uh, an appearance in the King Orange Jamboree Parade and at halftime of the Orange Bowl Classic. The band spent several days practicing in the South Florida sunshine, getting their routine down so that they would perform well before the national television audience. And the first chance that Clemson faithful got to see their band in action was in the King Orange Jamboree Parade. And a lot of cheers were reserved for the Tiger Marching Band.